Are you tired of doing endless amounts of bicep curls and seeing zero results from it? So what if I was to tell you that science holds the key to getting bigger and stronger arms? In this video, we're gonna tap into the latest research to help you reach your arm goals faster and more effectively. Today's video will dive into the most effective science-backed strategies to building your arms in 2024. We'll break down key studies and provide practical tips to maximize your gains, so not only making sure you're working hard, but working smart. Absolutely everything we'll discuss today is backed by scientific research, and I'll even put the study on the screen so you can take a look at it yourself. This is to give you guys a bit of peace of mind to know that the information you're getting actually works. So before we get into the actual exercises, it's important to understand the muscles you're actually targeting, and that'll be one of the things you come to understand by the end of this video. So let's quickly go through what each part of the arm is called and what they actually do. So the biceps brachii is the most well-known muscle of the upper arm and is responsible for elbow flexion and supination of the forearm. However, the brachialis, which lays underneath the biceps, is actually the prime mover during elbow flexion, contributing significantly to arm mass. Research shows that the brachialis can actually take up to 50% of the total upper arm mass, highlighting its major significance in upper arm development. Moving on to the triceps, the triceps brachii is the largest muscle of the upper arm, making up approximately two thirds of the arm's muscle mass. It consists of three heads, the long head, lateral head, and medial head that work together to extend the elbow. A study found that triceps not only play a crucial role in elbow extension, but also shoulder stabilization, which makes them essential for overall upper body strength. Now onto the brachioradialis. This muscle runs from your upper arm to your forearm and plays a crucial role in forearm strength and elbow flexion, especially during neutral grip exercises like hammer curls. A 2023 study emphasized that exercises targeting the brachioradialis significantly improved overall arm strength, particularly in movements that require a strong grip. And now finally, the flexor carpi muscles. These muscles are vital to wrist flexion and grip strength, which indirectly supports your arm workout. Strengthening your flexor carpi muscles will improve your ability to handle heavier weights on compound lifts, therefore enhancing overall muscle activation. A comprehensive review published in the Strength and Conditioning Journal highlighted the importance of targeting all of these muscles for balanced arm growth, not only for aesthetics, but for functional strength. So now you should have a solid understanding of the muscle anatomy in your arms. Let's explore the most science-backed exercises to best target these muscles for growth and strength. So the barbell bicep curl is a staple for arm training, primarily targeting the biceps brachii. A study showed that barbell bicep curls elicit higher levels of muscle activation compared to other common bicep exercises. This makes it a key exercise for anyone looking to maximize their bicep growth. So the incline barbell curl is particularly effective for targeting the long head of the bicep. This contributes to the peak of the bicep muscle. So a study in the Journal of Sports Science and Medicine found that incline dumbbell curls led to greater long head muscle activation compared to standard dumbbell curls. So this makes them essential for achieving that full rounded bicep look. So the hammer curls are very effective for targeting the brachioradialis, which is great for forearm strength and just upper arm girth. So a study published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research highlighted that hammer curls activate the brachioradialis muscle more than any other elbow flexion exercise. So that makes these a critical exercise to go in your arm day routine. So these exercises specifically target the flexor carpi muscles, which are really important for forearm width and overall grip strength. So these exercises not only enhance your forearm aesthetics, but also improve your heavier lifts and enhance performance in other compound lifts. So tricep dips are one of the most effective exercises for targeting all three heads of the tricep. So incorporating tricep dips into your workout routine will ensure you're maximizing your growth potential for your tricep. So the overhead tricep extension is particularly effective for targeting the long head of the tricep, which is great for arm size and shoulder stability. Research shows that this exercise maximizes the stretch and the activation to the long head of the tricep, leading to significantly more growth and strength when compared to other tricep exercises. But quick tip is when you're training triceps, make sure you're doing exercises that target all three heads of the tricep. That doesn't necessarily mean doing one exercise or two exercises that target all of the tricep pairs, but just make sure you're covering all of them evenly across the session. This balanced approach leads to more significant gains and will reduce the risk of muscle imbalances. So exercises are just part of the equation. How you structure your workout based on volume, intensity, and frequency is key to maximizing your muscle growth. So let's talk about volume first. So many studies, including this one, state that training in higher weekly volumes, which is defined as at least 10 sets per muscle group per week, will often elicit higher levels of hypertrophy compared to lower volumes of training. So ideally you should be training at least 10 sets per muscle group per week to maximize your muscle growth. So just to give you an example, you want to do 10 sets for your bicep, 
10 sets for your tricep and 10 sets for your forearm muscles across the whole week. So let's move on to frequency. So training your arms multiple times per week has been shown to be significantly more effective for hypertrophy than only training them once per week. So many studies find that a higher training frequency often results in greater gains, which is most likely due to the increased frequency of muscle protein synthesis. So let's move on to intensity. So progressive overload, which is gradually increasing the weight or intensity, is really crucial for muscle growth. Many studies have correlated progressive overload with hypertrophy because it is constantly making your muscles adapt to the intensity you're working at. So let's talk about common mistakes when training your arms and how you can actually avoid them. Because even with the best exercises and the greatest amount of intensity, frequency and volume, you can still make mistakes that hinder your progress. So the first one is an overemphasis on bicep training. So don't get me wrong, I love training my biceps, but many people overtrain their biceps and completely neglect their triceps and their forearm muscles, leading to massively imbalanced growth in your arms. And remember, triceps take up to two thirds of your upper arm musculature, so ignoring them, you're leaving a lot of muscle gains on the table. So the next one is poor form. So using improper form can limit your muscle activation and increase your risk of injury. Because for example, swinging the weights during a bicep curl takes a significant amount of the tension off of your biceps and encourages the use of momentum during your bicep curl movements, which we don't want. And the final mistake is a lack of variation. Sticking to the same routine without any variation can easily cause plateaus. And I know I spoke about the best exercises to use earlier on, but that doesn't mean to only use them. You need to use them in various forms and pick other variations of them exercises if you enjoy them the most. Just make sure you keep your workouts varied. So varying the exercises, grip positions and angles you're using during your exercises can ensure balanced muscle growth across your whole arm. And plenty of studies show that varying your exercises every four to six weeks is extremely effective in preventing plateaus. So to avoid these mistakes, make sure you include not only bicep exercises, but tricep and forearm exercises too. Keep your form strict and vary the exercises you're doing across the weeks. So this approach, supported by research, will make sure you're maximizing your growth potential. So in summary, using varied exercises that target your biceps, triceps, and both muscles of your forearm, along with proper form, frequency, intensity, and volume, will definitely give you significant gains. Right, so that's this video coming to an end. If you do enjoy these videos, where I give you tips based on how to train your muscles backed by science, do let me know in the comments, but equally, if you don't necessarily like them, still let me know in the comments because I want to make content that is catered to everyone so all walks of life can enjoy these videos. If you're new and not subscribed, make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell icon so you get notified every time I post, which will be every Wednesday at 5 p.m. and every Saturday at 5 p.m. If you like this video in particular, make sure to smash that thumbs up button and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.